So in the last few weeks, a totally new football club ownership model has been brought into the public eye and it basically involves you paying £49 and as a result of that becoming the owner of a football club. Pretty crazy and it's been described as absurd and embarrassing by a critic who's also said that it destroys everything that's good about non-league football. Now, the founder of this ownership model has said that it will help make clubs self-sustainable as well as increase attendances and rise through leagues debt free. But why has there been so much controversy around it? We're looking at that in this video. And the way this ownership model basically works is that people vote on an app on all the key decisions that happen at this football club. So player sign-ins, contract negotiations, even things like arranging training sessions, it's all voted for on an app. And talking of apps, one football is a great app to stay up to date with all the football going on around the world, loads of different leagues, football league, non-league, stats, about all these different leagues, league tables, upcoming fixtures, loads of stuff. Find out about it all on One Football's app. The link to download it is in the top line of the description. But anyway, back to the app that this video is about, and that is called Own a Football Club. The app describes itself as a once in a lifetime chance to be at the forefront of a whole new generation of football club owners, and that it's the biggest revolution of football since the dawn of the Sky Sports era in 1992. That's a big statement to come out with, so let's dig into it. So essentially, own a football club is like a real life football manager. People pay 49 pounds and that entitles them to vote on all the key decisions at a football club that this owner football club overall company decides to go and purchase. Now, there are currently 3,500 people signed up to it and they have set the cap at 10,000 people. Now the aim is currently to go and purchase a non-league football club. According to their website, there are currently four teams that they have shortlisted They've been negotiating with three. One of those is Hensford Town. And once they're in a football club, they want to own 51% of it. So they're majority shareholders so that this group of owners can vote on everything that happens at the football club. Now, because this model is so different and such a new thing, it's obviously brought about a lot of criticism and a lot of controversy of non-league purists that do not like it one bit. Non-league football, particularly from the seventh tier and below, is so based around the local community. It's got a lot of volunteers that come in and keep the club going. It's got local businesses that help sponsor things and basically just it's all about the local community. And it's this local community that creates a really warm spirit around these non-league grounds. And the founder of Own a Football Club, Stuart Harvey, has come out and said that a lot of non-league clubs are trying to raise capital from the same sponsors, the same small community, and they're getting crowds of two to 300. It's not a way to run a football club. Do you fans want their team to bob along or nearly get relegated? Or do they have dreams and ambitions? When we spoke to people, we realised they wanted more fans in the ground. They want to be successful. If they want that, then they have to do something different than what they are doing. There are a few fans who will be cynical, but would you rather watch football with 500 people or 2,000 people where there's a positive mood around the football club? And while all of these owners from Owner Football Club are a big community of 3,500 people currently, potentially 10,000, it's a totally different type of community. It's an online community made up of people from all around the world. Some examples of countries that Harvey has said people are from the likes of China and Australia. So literally it stretches right across the planet and people that really prior to them purchasing these non-league football clubs will have no idea about these non-league football clubs even existing. So where Stuart Harvey talks about potentially crowds increasing from 500 to 2,000 because of this ownership model, are these people from all across the world actually going to go and attend these matches? Because for me, I don't see why a lot of these people are going to go and attend these matches. Just because you paid £49 to become an owner of a football club, are you going to potentially spend thousands of pounds travelling to go and watch this team, even once in real life, let alone on a regular basis? And regardless of who this football club is, they do eventually go and purchase. The people that go to those matches of that team on a regular basis could become alienated by this whole situation, potentially. And that could cause them to not turn up to matches potentially, which could see the crowds drop rather than increase. So yeah, I am a bit skeptical about the point about crowds increasing. Now they could increase if the team is successful on the pitch and rise through the leagues, but that's gonna happen regardless of the ownership model. Regardless of what the community think, regardless of whether the hardcore fans are gonna stay involved, or it's gonna keep the community involved, is this ownership model 
going to actually help a non-league football club rise up through the leagues and be successful over a long period of time. On the ownership model overall, Harvey has actually come out and said that he thinks that the chairman's role in football is outdated. I believe a community of like-minded football people can make a rational and calculated decision better than the chairman. The owners are making the final decision, they are replacing the chairman. All we are doing is applying common sense, simple mathematics, statistics into running a football club. In the ideal world, having democracy amongst a set of football fans is an absolute luxury. To have a set of fans, potentially 3,500 people, voting on key decisions such as player signings, contract negotiations, planning training sessions and much more. Are these people going to have enough knowledge to actually have a well-informed decision on these topics? So for example, if a chairman at a football club or a set of directors are going to vote on something, it will be made absolutely paramount that they are aware of every part of what they're going to be voting on. So this is going to be a small number of people and the chairman or whichever member of staff it is at the football club can spend time making sure that these people that are voting on something that's a really, really important decision for the football club are absolutely 100% aware of every benefit and drawback that could potentially happen. With a group of thousands of people, it's going to be a lot harder to communicate all of that information properly and accurately and every positive and negative mapped out so that everyone can make a completely well-informed decision. It may be possible, but it is difficult to do it in a quick space of time and ensure that everyone is voting for the right reasons. Because while these people have paid £49, they don't have to keep themselves clued in to absolutely every single thing that's going on at the football club and spending loads of time invested into this club. They can just go on their app and some key decision can come up. They just vote on it, yes, no, or buy or sell, or negotiate the player's contract or not without having any sort of informed decision. For example, if a contract negotiation is going to be voted on or a new player signed is going to be voted on, these need to be voted on based on people actually seeing these players play, deciding whether they are a benefit to the football club and that's done usually by a chairman or a manager or a set of directors or a scout. People who have a lot of knowledge of this player. Do these 3,500 people that are going to be voting on things have enough knowledge on a specific player that the club wants to sign to actually vote on it? For example, if it comes down to a choice between an experienced player that's been in the football league before that all these people actually know about or some unheard of player that's going to come from a lower league that is really overall in the long term going to be a bit more of a benefit to the football club than the experienced player who's passed his sell by date and he's just dropping down through the leagues and with this young player from a lower league actually being better in terms of ability currently than this experienced player the manager for example might have made his mind up on which player he would much prefer but the owners might vote differently because they don't know who this new player is and that's where it comes down to the actual politics of how much of a say the manager will have on the players that are signed. Because in a normal football club, the manager usually has a big say on what players are signed, but having to wait until 3,500 people potentially have to vote on whether a player should be signed or not, that's going to make things a little bit awkward. Depending on what club they go and purchase, it could be a full-time club, and these players and manager, they will depend on this football club for their livelihood. It's their career, and essentially, you're leaving it to a public vote as to whether you stay in a job or not. And is that really fair to bring into a football club? Also, if on these key decisions there is a split of, let's say, 52% saying, yes, sign this player, and 48% saying, no, don't sign this player, that's 48% of people that are unhappy. And if they're unhappy on a number of key decisions going forward, because they've not really invested a huge amount of money, only £49, that's less than you pay for FIFA 19 this year, people may just treat this as a game and not take it completely seriously. They might just think, you know what, I'm actually not really that bothered. I can't be bothered to stay and make all these decisions and have a say. I'm not really that bothered anymore. The novelty has really worn off. So when it comes to my renewal next year, for example, I'm not going to be bothered. I'm just going to leave. That's exactly what happened to my football club who took over Ebb Split United in 2008. At the time, there were 32,000 people signed up when they bought Ebb Split, And it's pretty much an exact same sort of model as to what's going on with owner football club. However, this is back in a time where technology was not as advanced as it is today. This is one of the reasons that Stuart Harvey says that owner football club will work better than my football club because technology has advanced and this mobile phone app is going to be a lot more accessible than what my football club was back then in 2008, potentially. Then owner football club has a higher chance of succeeding at what my football club failed at 
which was retaining the number of owners. Now, my football club very quickly lost a huge amount of owners. Within just over a year, the number had dropped down to 9,000, and heading into the start of the 12-13 season, the number of members had dropped down to just 1,500, and at the time when they eventually decided to hand over the club in the early part of 2013, there were less than 1,000 members, which is a huge drop down from what they started with. And they had to hand the club over with the club losing a huge amount of money, apparently annual losses of around £800,000. They were on the brink of administration and had to hand the club back over to the Supporters Trust. But as they were in charge for five years, that is a relatively long amount of time. They did actually achieve a little bit of success. They won the FA Trophy right at the start of their time in charge. Then they got relegated from the Conference of the Conference South, but immediately bounced back into the Conference. So there was no drastic improvement in the position of the club league-wise, but they did have to go backwards to come back to where they started pretty much. So they took over the club, didn't really take it forward much, but also it didn't go backwards much. That is apart from at the end of their reign where they nearly made the club go bankrupt. As I said, at the time, Ebsley were in the fifth tier of the conference. Owen Football Club have rumoured to be taking over Pensford Town, who are currently in the seventh tier. They're in negotiations with them. Stuart Harvey had been to three of their games, but now they have said there is going to be no deal taking place between these two clubs. And they're now in negotiations with two other clubs. So we'll see where it all leads to. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this whole situation in the comment section down below. What would you think if Owen Football Club came and purchased your football club? Would you be happy with it? Would you get on board with it? Would you become an owner? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and click subscribe as well. I'm trying to get 15,000 subscribers by the end of the season. If you can help me get there, that'd be absolutely awesome. And yeah, I hope you see this video and thanks for watching.